Hi, we've uh, managed to get over to the other workshop today. Master Maker is not in the studio, which gives me the opportunity to express my concerns. Way back in the summer, in episode 5, Master Maker had a good old play with some fire and flames with the Batmobile. I did not approve. But he also filmed a follow-up episode all about how to make fire and flame systems, which has not been aired. Until now. I do not approve. So, um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about last week's show. Now, in last week's show, we set fire to things. We got the Batmobile and we set the propane burner up and we had a lot of fun. <laughs> and we had loads of comments that came from that. Very positive comments, actually. But in particular, people were asking, how did we do it? How did we build those systems? What do we do? They've looked online and they've looked for YouTube videos and they can't find anything at all to do with how to build those systems. Now, there is a reason for that. Um, I'm going to go into that in a bit. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about what we use, um, how we build them and why we build them. Now, the reason there isn't a huge amount of information out there on YouTube about how to build these systems is, is safety. It's that simple. Basically, this is a propane cylinder. Now, it's used for, for cooking, for caravan sites and camping and things like that. So that's where we generally see them. The whole concept of opening a valve and setting fire to the gas isn't something that you really probably should be encouraged to do. Irresponsible. And really, I can't really stress this enough. If you're not confident about doing any of this sort of stuff, don't don't do it. Get an expert to do it. You know, contact us. You know, we can build systems for you. There's lots of people that can help you out with this. And the golden, 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 golden number one rule, the number one rule with all of with anything like this is knowledge and research. I mentioned the, the Make Fire book last week. Get a book like this. Sit down and read the book and, and absorb the information before you even go before you even go out and buy a propane cylinder. Read about what it is that you're doing. That knowledge will set you up massively. If someone, if somebody had, had given me this book when I first started playing around with this stuff, number one, it would have saved me huge amounts of money. And number two, it would have saved me an awful lot of time and stress. Yes. Because it is quite stressful trying to work out what things to plug into what things and you're worrying about gas leaks and all those sort of things. Do the research, understand the science behind what you're doing before you do it. Anyway, enough for health and safety. Let's, let's get on to what we're going to talk about. Propane. Now, it comes in lots of different sizes. You've probably seen it quite a lot in these things. Um, these are kind of a butane propane mix. Um, and they, they have these little refillable cylinders that, that you can buy. They're great, they're fine, but the only problem with them is that from, from, from the intent, from the purposes of, of setting fire to the gas, the gas doesn't last very long and they come with funny little screw fittings that are very, very difficult to find anything that kind of fits to them safely. So generally I discarded those, I didn't use those and I went instead for a smaller size propane cylinder, that, like, like I said, the sort of thing you see uh, camping. Very easy to get hold of, very good value and ideal for what we want, especially from our purposes where we put them in the vehicles, they're, they're a great size. Now, what we can't do is just open this valve and set fire to the gas that comes out. That would be, number one, highly irresponsible, and number two, incredibly uncontrollable. No. Just no. So we don't do that. What we need to do is we need to regulate the gas flow that comes out of here and the way we regulate the gas flow that comes out of here is we buy and we use a regulator. Now, these are the regulators that we use. Um, very, very simple. It's simply exactly what it says it is. It's a valve and it regulates the flow of gas. So that attaches onto the cylinder. The gas is then regulated and flows out here at different pressures or different rates. Now, so we know what's actually in the cylinder. It's a good idea to get hold of a gauge. And that gauge just plugs into the cylinder and that'll tell you what the contents of the, of the, of the gas is inside the cylinder at any one point. And the, that simply just, they're all, the, the, screw, the screw threading, sorry, the, the screw threads are very, very uh, standard. 
he says. Can't actually do it the right way around. <laughs> There we go at last. So you can see there that we've got the gauge. A little bit closer there. See that we've got the gauge and we've got the regulator. So you've now got thread to go into the cylinder, gauge and regulator. And then we'll just fit that to the cylinder. You see here we've got the valve that opens from the cylinder. So that opens the cylinder and allows the gas to come through to the gauge. Gauge will show us the contents of the cylinder and then the regulator, which is going to control the flow of the gas from the cylinder. Now, we can't just now set fire to the gas coming out of here. Again, that it wouldn't work. What we need to do is, this is a very, very important uh, little gadget, a very important device. It's called a flashback arrester. Now, that is simply going to clip or screw onto the back of the regulator here. Now, it serves a very, very important purpose. Coming off here, there's going to be a tube, and, and ultimately we're going to ignite the gas that comes out of the end of this tube. If for any reason the flame was to come back down this tube and back through the regulator and into the cylinder, it could ignite the vapour inside the cylinder. That would be very, very bad. So what we need to do is we need to fit a little device that stops that happening. It stops any flame or any ignitable source coming back down through the cylinder, through the line. It's called a flashback arrester. You want to fit that as close to the regulator as possible. And not everybody uses them. We use them. I think they're very, very important. A little bit of safety. They don't cost a lot of money. And really, you know, it, 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 it's a no-brainer. Put one in. So we've got our regulator fitted with our gauge and our flashback arrester. What we're now going to do is, is think about how we control that. Now, at the moment, the only way to turn the gas on here is going to be to open and close the cylinder very, very quickly. It's not very controllable and it's a bit crude. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to use an electronic method to do that. I'll just bring this around here. You can see this. This is a gas solenoid. Now, what it does is when voltage is applied to these two wires, it's just 12 volts, it opens and closes a valve inside here electronically. So if we connected that in line here, what happens is when we apply power to this, it opens a valve which releases the gas. So the gas coming up to this point will be under pressure because all these are open. So the gas to here is under pressure. But there's no gas coming out of here until we apply voltage. When we apply the voltage, the solenoid opens, the gas comes out. Now, we can put a computer on this and we can control the, the amount of gas that flows. We can pulse it or we can just add a battery and a switch. So when we press the switch, the solenoid opens and the gas comes out. When we take our finger off the switch, the gas stops coming out which is kind of what we do in 99% of the things that we do. So that's your gas solenoid. Now, you'll probably notice up to this point there are threads, but now there is no thread. This is why it starts getting a little bit more complicated. Using the correct hose is really, really important. Now you can see this particular hose is designed for propane, and it is important that you use the right hoses. The gas itself can be corrosive, and it can damage certain types of hoses, so use the right kind of hose. This actually screws onto the end of the flashback arrester, which is really, really convenient and really, really good. But you'll notice on the other end, there's no way to screw that onto there. So we need to cut the hose. We cut the hose, we slide it over the end of here, and then we crimp it, either use a Jubilee clip or doesn't another crimping form to make sure we have a gas-tight seal. And once that is on there, Obviously, then we can put another bit of hose on the other end and we can then route that off to wherever we want that to go to. So we've got everything connected up. As you can see, we've opened the valve. We are going to basically, our gauge shows us the gas that we've got in our cylinder. Our regulator is going to flow, the regulator is going to regulate the flow of gas. Our flashback arrester, our hose, which is going to go into our solenoid. Coming out of our solenoid, we're then going to use, what I suggest you do is you could use a little bit of hose to route through to where you want to direct the flame. But what I suggest is at the very, very end of the flaming system, use a bit of copper pipe or use a bit of metal pipe in, a, in effect, you know, that is at the end of your um, burning process. This doesn't burn. So obviously, if, if your gas will come out of the end of here, which will be ignited. This will get warm. Now, if this was a rubber tube, there's a risk that it could melt or it could get damaged. If it's metal, it's safe. So 
at the flame end of whatever you're building, try to keep it all metal. And that way it, it's just a little health and safety tip. It's, and, it, and it, you know, you can vary the size of the, of the tube to create different effects uh, for the flame as well, which, which I can talk about later on. Now, probably the hardest thing of all, setting fire to the gas. <laughs> really? Now, you might think setting fire to propane is actually very easy. It's actually quite difficult. Um, the gas coming out of the cylinder is coming out under high pressure. Now, the thing with high pressure gas is, is it's in, under high pressure. So it's kind of a, a quite a powerful jet, a quite, a quite a powerful stream. And generally what it does is it blows out most ignition sources. So for example, if we took something like this, a little lighter, and then we lit it, it's very easy to blow the flame out. And that's what the gas does. So imagine if we just had that at the end of our ignition tube, and it was like this. As soon as the gas is, is propelled from here, it just blows the flame out. So you've got to overcome this problem. Now, there are lots and lots of ways to do this, and you can read about the, in, the, in the book I told you about. The way I decided to do this was electronically. Now, a number of people use a number of different things. I experimented a lot with different ignition sources. One in particular, which was quite successful, was uh, glow plugs. So vehicle glow plugs. It's wire here you can see set up. So basically what we do is we apply 12 volts to the glow plug, and this end here just glows red hot. Now, when that is placed into the path of the escaping gas, um, it ignites the gas. Um, so th this was quite good. The reason I didn't use the... I've used this on some things, but I haven't used this on a lot of things because it does take a while for the glow plug to heat up, which means you need to turn the glow plug on, let it heat up before you expel the gas. So you can't really do it all at the, at the press of a button. Now, remember, back to the solenoid. When we press, when we apply 12 volts to this and we press the switch, this opens this solenoid instantly. So the gas is being released from the cylinder instantaneously. As that gas is being released out of the end of the tube, it would be great if, with the same switch, we could have an ignition source that would kind of all syncs up. And eventually, what I, what I came across was, oh, yeah, the other thing I piece use is, of course, um, Spark plugs. Here's an old, here's a coil off a motorcycle. Put a spark plug on the end of it. Spark plugs are are a really good way as well of creating a spark. And in effect, it got me thinking. And I know this is a very strange looking device, but if I bring this close to the camera, you will see what this actually does. I don't know whether you can see that. It's a plasma lighter. So basically these sort of, you know, lighters that you can buy on eBay and places like that, and they create a little, a, a little plasma stream across. And this is one of those ones that you use to light fires with. But it's been modified, it's been covered in fiberglass and a bit of and a metal shrouds added to it. Now the reason the metal shrouds have been added to it is because obviously this is going to be in the flame path. Most of these uh, lighters are plastic. It will work once. After that it won't work again. Um, Imagine your flame path is here, your ignition source is going to be in your flame path. So you do need to protect it in some way with metal or fiberglass or something like that. So in effect, what I do is the solenoid is triggered, the, flame, the gas comes out of here, this is placed in the path of the gas, the plasma uh, arc is created and it ignites the gas. And really, it's, uh, it's that simple, really. The placement of the igniter is actually really important. Now, you will know because, of course, you have done your research and you have read everything about uh, propane in this book, you will know that there is a certain percentage mix of air and propane to get combustion. If you place your ignition source too close to the nozzle, not enough air has mixed with the propane coming out of the nozzle to cause ignition. If you place it too far away, you can get the same problem. So there is a kind of a, a sweet spot that you can find where the ignition source will ignite the propane once it's mixed with enough air. 
I'm going to talk about that in another video, how you get that perfect mix and how we get from the Batmobile a nearly 12 foot flame coming out of the back. There are other things that we've added to get that flame, but that will be in another video. Now, I have covered very, very briefly here the basic components and the basic elements to, to make this work. You really do need to go away and, and do the reading and, and, and so you understand in a lot more detail. Now, a few little kind of a little, little pointers, things like connecting things together. Um, you can get this uh, tape, which you can wrap around your connectors to make proper gas type seals. What I suggest is once you connect things up and you tighten them up, get some soapy water, spray your soapy water over your connectors, turn your gas on, check that everything is gas tight. Propane is heavier than air. Now what that means is if you're using propane in a contained environment, a, 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 an enclosed environment, the propane will sit, it will pool at the bottom. Air will sit on top and the propane will sit below. That's quite dangerous because that vapour, once it gathers and once it builds up, can become explosive. So checking that your, all, your, all your connectors are gas tight is really, really important. So don't, don't scrimp on time on that. Take your time. Put the tape on if you need to. Tighten everything up. Spray it with soapy water. Check that you've got proper gas tight seals before you introduce any flames into this system at all. Um, really, really important. Now, one thing I didn't touch on here was what's happening inside here. Now, the funny thing is, you would think, you look at a cylinder like this, and you look at a cylinder like this, and you think, well, there's more gas in this one, and there's less gas in this one. The gas in here must be under much higher pressure than the gas in this cylinder. But that's not the way propane works. Um, once you read a little bit about this, and you understand the chemistry behind it, it's actually really fascinating. I, I mentioned before that what, what's happening in here is that basically there is liquid inside. In fact, you can hear that when I probably do that. There is liquid inside here, and there's liquid inside here. And what happens is at a certain temperature, this liquid boils. It boils and produces a vapour, and the vapour sits in the top part of the cylinder. When we release the valve, that vapour is able to be released, expelled from the cylinder. And then we go through the process again of the liquid in here boiling to produce vapour. Now, when liquid boils, it, it draws heat from the outside kind of air, the surroundings. I'm not a chemist, so again, you need to read a lot more about this. But in effect, what this means is that if you crank open the cylinder and you expel the gas, the liquid's got to boil to make more gas. And that actually generates heat. And that heat's got to come from somewhere. So that heat is pulled away from the liquid. And of course, what that does, it makes the cylinder very, very cold. Now, one very important thing to understand with propane the pressure inside this cylinder is exactly the same as the, pro as the pressure inside this cylinder. The pressure is dependent on temperature and on the outside air. So if this cylinder is under a certain temperature and this cylinder is under a certain temperature, the pressure inside them is identical. It, it's irrelevant, the size of the cylinder. It doesn't matter. This cylinder could be the size of a house. If it's under the same temperature as this cylinder, the pressure inside will be the same. And this is really important. People look at these cylinders and go, oh, that's, that's not dangerous. That's a lot more dangerous. It's exactly the same pressure. There is no difference. The gas inside here is pressurized. The gas inside here is pressurized. Now, what that means is that if we open this valve on this cylinder and we release the gas very, very, very quickly, the process of boiling and turning the liquid into vapour has to happen a lot. So the heat that's been generated starts basically drawing heat away and it, it, it makes this cylinder very, very cold. And because the cylinder starts to become cold, the pressure, as we know, which is dependent on, on heat, drops inside the cylinder. So as the pressure inside the cylinder drops, because it's now getting colder, the pressure of the gas decreases as the pressure of the gas decreases, of course, if we're burning it, the, the flame gets smaller. So it's a funny kind of irony there that the more we open the valve and the more gas that we push through, we think, oh, that'll make a bigger flame. 
it actually does exactly the opposite. It makes a smaller flame because the cylinder is getting colder. And as we know, if the cylinder gets colder, the pressure decreases.